Hey everybody, welcome back to The History Freak. This is the second of two videos where I will be talking about Tudor impostors who were attempting to take the English throne from Henry VII. In the last video, I talked about young Lambert Simnel and how he, led by Yorkist supporters, attempted to impersonate Edward Earl of Warwick, a young boy who had a claim to the throne. If you didn't catch that video, why not check it out? I will post the link below. But for today, it's all about Perkin Warbeck, who posed probably the biggest threat to Henry's reign. Before we start, why not like this video, subscribe to this channel, and press the notification button. And after you've watched this video, of course, check out some of our other videos where you can learn about heaps of fabulous Tudor people. Okay, let's learn about Perkin Warbeck. First, let's briefly review the backstory. The War of the Roses was an English civil war that lasted decades. The houses York and Lancaster battled for the throne. York King Edward IV had two sons, the princes Edward and Richard. After the king's death, eldest son Edward should have become king but he and his brother, who were both still children, were placed into the tower, and their uncle became King Richard III. Many believed that the princes were murdered by their uncle so that he could become king, but the whole thing was very mysterious. There was little evidence, and as a result, rumours went wild. Richard III sat on the throne for just over two years before he was killed in the Battle of Bosworth Field and Henry Tudor became King Henry VII of England. Getting the crown this way was far from ideal, and even though he married Elizabeth of York to supposedly bring the two sides together in peace, it would prove to be a rocky road for Henry the years of tensions between the two sides could not just be undone. Henry had many enemies. It's thought that Perkin Warbeck was born around 1474. His father, it seems, had a job in Tournay, suggesting this is possibly where he spent his early years. It seems he also spent part of his childhood in Antwerp, where he worked as a servant, and some of his teen years in Cork, working for a merchant. Things get interesting for Warbeck around the early 1490s. Supposedly, some of the people in Cork thought he looked like he may be from the House of York, with some thinking he could be Edward Earl of Warwick. Ireland, of course, had been a stronghold of York. Probably with encouragement from Yorkist friends, he decided to impersonate Richard Duke of York, who was the younger of the two princes in the tower. If Richard was alive, and provided his older brother was dead, he was the true English king. It seems, from what people said, he did have a strong resemblance to the York family. So, who knows, maybe he was somehow related. The lack of hard evidence about the true fate of the princes meant that Warbeck could make up any story and who could say it was false. He said that his brother had been killed, but the murderers decided not to kill him. This seems a strange suggestion to me. Why on earth would the killer murder one brother, but leave the other, if the reason to kill them is because they are the rightful heirs to the throne? then they are both equally dangerous. And why, if I was the killer, would I suddenly develop a conscience? But I suppose he had to come up with some story, and if you sell it with enough conviction, it could seem believable. People may have wanted to believe his story, or at least pretend to believe it, more because they just wanted to see Henry off the English throne. We already saw with Lambert Simnel how much momentum a plan against Henry could get 
with so many wanting to see him removed. It seems Warbeck had a lot of support. Things really picked up speed when he got help from some very powerful people, such as Margaret of Burgundy, who was somewhat of a supporter. You may remember this name came up with Lambert Simnel. Margaret was the sister of former kings Edward IV and Richard III, and therefore the aunt of the real Prince Richard. Now Margaret had left England for around five years before the real Prince Richard was born, so there was certainly no close aunt-nephew bond here. Did Margaret believe this young man was really her nephew? Hard to say for sure, although probably not. As Margaret had already supported the Lambert Simnel plan a few years before, this suggests her true motivation was more about seeing York back in power as well as taking revenge on King Henry, who is the reason her brother Richard was killed. Henry was not happy about Margaret's involvement. If we are to believe that Margaret really did think this was her nephew, then her actions could have been more for emotional reasons. Margaret had lost a lot of people she loved, almost all of her siblings were dead, and the glory days of her family being in the highest position in the land were gone. Maybe she really wanted to believe that she still had some family remaining and she would do whatever she could to support them. But Margaret was not Warbeck's only supporter. Around Europe and a little in England, support for Warbeck was growing. More and more important people were seemingly willing to help him rise. The Holy Roman Emperor and the King of France, Charles VIII, were on side. French support, however, seemed to fade when a treaty with England forced him to change. With Margaret's financial backing, Warbeck was seemingly in a position of strength, and in summer 1495, he came to England with a large army to begin his attempt to get the crown. However, it was a disastrous start. It's thought that before he even got to shore, he was already having to escape after some of his men were killed by locals of Kent who supported King Henry. In fact, support in England was lacking. Henry had been on the throne since 1485, and being no idiot, he had put himself in the most secure position possible, using spies, allies, and building up a fortune that could help him fight wars if necessary. After such a build-up, this must have felt like a devastating blow to Warbeck, but he needed to regroup and he would eventually end up in Scotland. The Scottish King, James IV, welcomed Warbeck and seemed to fully support him, at least initially. Things started well in Scotland, Warbeck actually married a Scottish noblewoman. In 1496, he invaded for the second time with Scottish troops. However, it was quite a feeble attempt, and it failed quickly. A seven-year peace treaty between England and Scotland was agreed and in time, James would marry Henry's daughter Margaret. Scotland, it seems, could no longer offer much help to Warbeck. But he wasn't ready to give up. The following year, he came back to England, landing in Cornwall. It seems this was a strategic decision to put himself there, as the people of Cornwall had already had some beef with the king over taxes, which had led to the Cornish Rebellion. In Cornwall, Warbeck was well treated and called Richard IV. Many locals joined his army, which meant his numbers grew enormously. You might think that this would mean Warbeck was more confident than ever, but this was clearly not the case. Once he knew the king was preparing to deal with this situation, Warbeck left the army and went into sanctuary. But it seems he surrendered believing he would be pardoned. He was then brought to London and placed into the tower, the same place where the real Prince Richard was supposedly murdered. It's thought that Warbeck confessed the truth in front of Henry and told him his real backstory, 
and was then made to say it publicly. Warbeck actually spent quite a bit of time at court. But of course, Henry had limited trust in him, and it would have been an uneasy time. It's hard to imagine how Warbeck must have been feeling. Henry had some of his supporters put to death, so he can't have felt good about his own chances, despite the fact that King Henry was playing somewhat nice at this point. One way of looking at this that doesn't seem very well explored is where did Henry's Queen Elizabeth of York stand on everything? Elizabeth was older sister to the real Prince Richard. Based on what happened, it seems she could not possibly have believed Warbeck was her brother. Ultimately, she had loyalty to her husband and their children, who were the heirs to the throne. But I just wish we knew more about what she was thinking about this situation. Warbeck tried to escape, but it was another disaster to add to his list. He was caught and supposedly put in the stocks before being sent back to the tower. He attempted to escape once again, this time seemingly in some sort of plan with Edward the Earl of Warwick. It seems that this time Henry was done with Warbeck. Unlike Lambert Simnel, who Henry had actually left alive and put to work in the royal palace, Henry decided that Warbeck was too dangerous and he would have to go. In November 1499, Warbeck was hanged at Tyburn. So that's it for Perkin Warbeck's story. It was certainly a very brave attempt, but maybe a little overly ambitious. And unfortunately, that ambition cost him his life. Okay, that's it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And join us for our next video when we'll be taking a look at Anne Seymour.